Hello friends and welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I've decided to do my favourite products of each category of all time. Some are high-end, some are chemist, but they are like my all-time favourites. Some categories do have more than one, but some categories like I've only found one and these are like my die-hard favourite products. Okay, first of all, primers. My favourite primer of all time will have to be the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Filter. Sorry, my label has come off. Something about all these products as well as they're not clean. So I apologise. They're as clean as I can make them. But um, they're all well loved. So at least you can tell how much I love them. So I have this one in Light Claire. And it's such a beautiful glowy primer. But it gives such a nice service for makeup to go on as well. Because it's just so glowy but it also leaves a bit of a tackiness to it so your makeup just sticks really nicely i apply this all over the face especially under the eyes because it normally brings a lot of brightness to that area and i really struggle as you can tell with under eye circles so there's that one my second primer which i wouldn't really count as a primer but a step before my foundation is the go-to face hero oil i have really dry skin so some foundations that are a bit more full coverage tend to be a bit more of a matte formula so they don't glide on the way i want them to so putting a bit of face oil on my skin beforehand just gives it that nice slick and really helps me blend out the product my first favorite foundation is the hourglass vanish stick i have this foundation in like four different shades and i absolutely love it it's such a good I'm wearing it today, like day-to-day -day foundation, but it's really good to build up coverage for a night out or a big event, but it still can be like sheared to a nice like medium coverage to everyday wear. It comes in a stick formula. This one's a really nice one with an oil because it slides on really beautifully and it gives a really natural finish. Definitely not matte, but also not glowy. Just a really nice, your skin, but better finish. My next favourite foundation would be the NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation. This is a gorgeous foundation. A lot better for, I would say, everyday wear. Probably a lot better for your dry skin type, so you're not going to use an oil underneath something. But it gives you the same kind of full uh, coverage effect. Not necessarily full coverage. You can build it up to that. But you cannot see any pigmentation or redness underneath, which is what I want from a foundation. So this one's gorgeous and the shade range is amazing. Next, we'll move on to powders. So I have two options here. One is a pressed powder, which is from a drugstore and it's a CoverGirl Advanced Radiance. So this is sad. This is how much I love it. <laughs> so this is a really beautiful... lightweight pressed powder so it gives you like a really nice finish underneath the eyes especially and it gives you like a natural set without it being cakey so i really struggle because i really need powders because as you can see i'm like line city especially under my eyes i get creases as well as my forehead right here and my lips so i need to set my face but because i'm so dry it's not necessarily a good thing that I want to do but this powder leaves it feeling really still really oh, I, don't know. I don't want to say moist because it doesn't feel moist but touchable it doesn't feel dry it doesn't feel cakey it doesn't feel powdery but it does set everything into place and it's just such gives such a nice natural finish like I have it on today my next option for powder is the cover fx powder in light this is the luminous setting powder illuminating setting powder so this has little 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 micro i don't want to say glitter it's more like a shimmer so it does give you a beautiful can you see it on there radiant finish what i love about this powder too is like i have the other glow one in laura mercier but that one's like a highlighter like it's glowy this one gives you a glow, but not like a, I put highlight all over my face glow. And the, the only thing I would say about this powder is I have it in shade light and I can only use this all over the face. 
and I'm tan. It's not a great shade range. Like I could probably use it now. Um, this is me pale, but it would give me a definite slight difference, which is not what I'm looking for. Okay, next up is concealers. I have two options here. Both are quite similar to each other. I have the Tarte Shape Tape and the Dua Jouer High Coverage Liquid Concealer. Uh, I would say they give similar coverage, um, Tarte Shape Tape more so, but the formula is very different. So this one is really good. A lot more hydrating underneath the eyes. So I use this one today. It doesn't cover as much as I want to. It does cover a lot. Just because I have dark circles, don't take that as it won't cover. Mine are just so bad. Um, but it does really cover and really is really nice to highlight the face as well. So it gives a really nice coverage and then it has that really creamy formula. So it's really easy to blend out and it doesn't give you dry patches or cakiness underneath the eye. Where the Tarte Shape Tape still doesn't give that to me. But it is a lot more of a mattifying formula and it can look definitely more visible, more like I'm wearing makeup. So I do like to use this one once I've used an oil underneath as well because it just gives it that extra slick and gives it that extra blendability on my face. Okay, next up we have bronzer and contour. I have a weird process of categories in this category. <laughs> so basically what I do first is on most days I'll use a liquid contour beforehand when I put my foundation on my face. My favourite liquid contour is the Huda Beauty Beauty Huda Beauty Tan Core and I have it in fair. It's it's not a good look, I apologize. <laughs> I'm almost out. This is such a nice colour because it's cool enough to go with like skin tones like a lot of cream bronzers especially when you try to put them on light skin tones they will just buff out quite orange and make you look like you have a whole different kind of bad foundation day around the edges of your face so this one is the perfect still leaning warm but has enough of a coolness to it to become a contour and then after that and i've set my face i use the kevin aquan this is the contour powder in medium so this one I've had for ages as well, and I haven't really even touched it. Oh, it's fantastic when you're a bit paler. It does come in deeper shades because it doesn't give you that contour that's really orange. It gives you that natural shadow, especially for your nose. Love this for your nose. And then I just use it, obviously, right here. Now, after I've used that product, I'll buff it out with a bronzer. Now, it was hard to use a bronzer because I do go from pale to tan quite regularly so I have quite a few different products in each category but this would be my all-time favorite and it's only a relatively recent find so it is the Benefit Hula Contours palette here so as you can see it has Hula Light, Regular Hula, Hula Caramel and Hula Toasted so if I'm tan I will use Hula Caramel and then pale I'll use both of these but I like that it has like so many different shades. For instance, I could put, if I was pale, the Hula focused it more on my cheekbones and then blend it out more with the Hula light. So it's a really easy way to give that flawless effect to your makeup, to your bronzer, just by like easily blending without being there for ages and going on and on and on and on and on and trying to blend it. You can just use a lighter color to give that like blended out effect. So this palette is incredible. So after that, I will be doing my blush. Now, I do have three, technically, for this category as well. What I'll use first when I've done with my liquid bronzer or my liquid contour is I've got this iconic blush. What is it in? Powder pink. It is the most intimidating pink colour, but once you blend it out, it is beautiful. This gives the skin such a natural flush and I love using it initially because when you put a blush on it can really disappear once you've got the highlighter and the bronzer on and 
although I only want like a little bit of a flush, it's good to powder up a liquid and then a powder so I still get that colour through. So if I put this one through, it just gives like a really light, fair pink touch. Now after that, I will go in with a powder blush. My all-time favourite will be Warm Salt by MAC. This is a very love blush. It is such a natural colour. It is enough of a bronzy kind of natural pinky shade that it really blends in and it gives you like a really light natural flush. For someone that doesn't really like blush, this is perfect because it evens out your face enough so it still gives you that flush but it's not like I'm wearing blush. Where if you want more of a I'm wearing blush, this recent find, Essence the Blush, has been my life. I've only had it for a week now and like I wear it every day. It is such a nice formula. It is the most beautiful colour. And it cost me like $5. And just on the cheeks. And a good thing is you can build up. So you can use it as a really light blush effect. Which is what I like more. Like you can have a bit of warmth. But it doesn't really look like I'm wearing a ton of blush. Now time for highlighter. My all time favourites would be. Now keep in mind. I love uh, a highlighter. Like, I don't want, like, a, oh, you know, natural, like, I want, like, this. Which, to me, is still relatively natural. <laughs> Maybe not to you, but to me, this is me not going too hardcore. What I used for today was the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy Highlighter. This is incredible. Just the shade of it. It's such a beautiful champagne. Exactly, champagne. It's not too golden where if you're pale, you can still pull it off. But it's not like too pink toned. I'm quite olive in my skin complexion. So I don't ideally love using a pink based highlighter unless I'm doing more of like a blushy look. So this gives me the perfect amount of champagne. Even that's on top of the pink right now. Look at that. And it's got that tinge of gold that really fits well with my skin. So it gives me a really natural glow. If I was more tanned, I would opt for the Becca Champagne Pop. So as you can see, this is very well loved. This is a very similar shade. I've actually never put them together before. Oh, actually. As you can see, this one is deeper. It has more of a bronze. It looks more pink, but it comes off more tan more bronze for sure and this is even more glowy than the amrezy but i definitely for this one would like more of a tan i can put it on my paler skin but it doesn't blend into my makeup necessarily as well as the amrezy one does but this is a die hard favorite so after i've highlighted my face i will go on with my brows now, a lot of these products are actually new favourites. And I have a kind of a weird assortment of products as well. So first, I will brush them up with like a soap product. And I love this Mecha Max Brow Guru Super Soap. This is incredible. You just spray it with a bit of even water, but setting spray. Get your spoolie in there and brush your brows upwards. And it just lays them really beautifully upwards without giving it a purposefully like soaked effect. Like some of them can look really thick. Like you can tell there's product on there. But this one still keeps your brows relatively fluffy. I absolutely love it. And then after that, I'll either go in with a pomade or a pencil. Uh, recently I've been using a pencil. That's what I've got today. What I'm wearing today is the L'Oreal Skinny Define Brow Artist Pencil. So I'll just fill in my arch a bit more and a little bit at the front. And it gives me enough. If I want a bit more, I'll go in with the Morphe Brow Definer Pencil. So this, as you can see, has a triangular tip. But the L'Oreal has definitely a smaller 
So this one's good if you want like a quicker brow. If you want less individual strokes and more of a, like a coverage perspective. This is a beautiful product. What shade do I have it in? And then if I want like a more defined brow, normally if I'm doing like a heavy eye, like a going out kind of makeup, I'll go in with the Benefits Cabral. This is in shade 3.5. I'm definitely darker now. This was kind of what I used when I was blonde. But it still works. Like the thing with eyebrows is a lot of people that tend to be blonde or lighter go for a darker brow. Where if they tend to be darker, they tend to go for a lighter brow. As you can see, my brow is definitely lighter than my hair colour to a degree. Where when I was blonde, I kind of wanted them a similar colour. <laughs> so this product is incredible. It is such a creamy formula. But it's not creamy enough that you look like you have Sharpie brows on. So you can still get enough definition to do individual strokes if you want. But you can also just fully in the whole brow. So this is amazing. And then after all of that, I'll go in again and set my brows with a uh, brow gel. This is the best one I found yet is the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. This is in clear and it's got a tiny brush. I don't think you can even tell how tiny that brush is, but it's tiny. And this gives the perfect amount of set without, yet again, you telling there's a product there. So enough set that your brow is going to be in place and it's going to stay in place, but it doesn't look crispy or like glued down, which is not what I want. You might want that. I want that. Finally, we're onto eyeshadow. There's many palettes I like. But if I only had to have one palette, it would be this one. Um, it is in horrendous condition. My dog got to it and for some reason it still lives. It is the original Jaclyn Hill palette. This palette is so versatile. All the shades you get in here, you get enough kind of colours to play around with, enough nice neutral mattes and the nice enough light shimmers that you can just create anything you want with this palette. Um, the only thing I would say about this palette is it doesn't have many cool tones. I'm normally a cool tone girl, but these tones are kind of neutral enough that they work for me. Like I have it on my eyes today. So it's a gorgeous palette. A lot of the makeup artists I know use this palette as like a wedding palette as well because it just goes so well. It's a must have in your collection and it is so cheap, like reasonably priced for what it is. So if you don't have this palette, you need this palette. Like anyone, even if you're not like a makeup junkie, this palette is a must have. So after eyeshadow, I tend to like lining my eyes. I just feel with my eye shape, it flatters me the most with my face shape especially. And I do like to recently come in the inner corner as well. So you need a very precise brush for that. So what I have been using is the Maybelline. Hyper Easy Brush Tip Liner. This is such a beautiful eyeliner. I've used many others before. The Kat Von D, the Stilla. One, they dry out really quickly and they don't give me like the intense black that this gives me as well as they bleed underneath my eyes, which I don't find this one does. So I 100% would rather get this one than any of those. But this, when this one doesn't do, like if you want something like full on, like you want it to stay there all day, you want to be able to like at the end of the day have to scrub to get off, get the Maybelline Matte Master Ink. This stuff, it's a lot harder to use in my opinion, but like it, look how black that is compared to the other one. That's still like really black, but that is like next level and it's not going anywhere. It will not bleed. This one tends to do a little bit at the end of the day, the Maybelline, but it's still really good. The Hyperfine still has that beautiful ability, but at the end of the day, it's a lot easier to take off with this one. You're going to have to need like an eye makeup remover to take off. Up next is Mascara. Um, my favourite all-time mascara, and I will not remember the name of it to save my life, is the Charlotte Tilbury. I want to say it's the Volume 2 mascara. 
that one is incredible. I'm currently out of it. I went through a stage relatively recently of lash extensions, so I tend to just not buy mascara because it's such a waste. And I ran out. Now I have the CoverGirl, the Super Sizer. I remember this was really popular when it came out, and it's such a beautiful mascara for lengthening and separating your lashes, but still giving you like volume. So it has a really cool brush, as you can see. And it really, like, you can really get in there and coat the lashes. It reminds me of the L'Oreal Telescopic, which I still love. But this one gives you even more dramatic lashes. And it's a beautiful starter mascara too, because it's not expensive and you can't really mess up with it. So definitely a go-to for me. And then finally onto the lips. I am a nude girl like I would hardly ever wear a red and when I wear a red I wear the Rihanna is it lip stunner the red dome one die hard love that doesn't go anywhere that's the only red I'm going to be using but in the way of nudes I have a whole drawer I'm happy to give you guys a tour of my makeup collection if you would like I would have to clean up a lot first but happy to do it so first for like a lip liner would be this Morphe one called Backstreet Love. It's what I've got on today. It's a really beautiful nude, leaning pink, but it's a beautiful base for any lipstick and a very similar one I have by Rimmel in Natural. Same, really nude. It basically is your lips but better. So it makes it really easy if you want to overline a little bit or adjust your lip shape. The other method I found recently, which works really well, is using a brow pencil. If you want that kind of in fashion, kind of dark edge look, using something like this and just lining the outside of your lips and then going in with a nude gives you that really like grungy look, which is fantastic. And you don't have to buy a dark eyeliner to do it, lip liner don't have to buy a dark lip liner to do it you can just do it with your eyebrow pencil in the way of like liquid lipstick my favorites would be i've got this morphe in virgin this is quite a pale nude and because i get so pale i need quite a pale nude to not look like a deep shade on me so this color here the formula is incredible it dries down, but it's still movable. It's still, it's not transferable, but it's not like, like drying to your lips. You don't feel like a vacuum has like sucked you in from the inside. This is a beautiful formula, very bouncy, almost like cloud-like. Love this. My other formula, which is a weird formula, is technically like a liquid lipstick, but it has a glossy finish. So it gives you that longevity of a liquid lipstick, but it's not matte or really drying. It's what I'm wearing today. Ignore this, I cut my lip. <laughs> it is the Bobbi Brown Crushed Liquid Lip. It's such an interesting formula and they come in so many beautiful shades as well. It is, look at that. So it's definitely a color, but like I haven't put gloss on. So this is the natural finish, but it definitely like leaves down a color. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's not just going to come off. It leaves that residue of the shade. So you do have the glossiness and the glossiness will fade throughout the day, but you tend to still have that shade underneath. It's a lot more long wearing than any of a lip gloss kind of lipstick finish not as long wearing as a liquid lipstick but still gives you that beautiful glossy finish so this is incredible and finally in the way of actual lipstick i have my two favorites here this one is by hourglass and it is in the shade believer these are like technically like a lip crayon but they're definitely like a I would say just a normal kind of lipstick formula. So that's that one there. So as you can see, very similar to these two, but it has like such a beautiful finish where it's not as glossy as the top one. Definitely like a satin lipstick. It 
it's just gorgeous like I can't explain how beautiful this one is it's something I would use on a bride if I was going to do a bride's makeup it is just stunning and it gives the lips such a beautiful sheen and it's oh I imagine this is a blush as well would be like to die for and then finally my favorite lipstick is mac matte lipstick in yas i feel like this one isn't mentioned enough it is such a beautiful color this was my like go-to going out lipstick it is such a beautiful nude and it has that iconic matte mac finish where it's still really creamy and like movable it's not super drying so it's great for a night out where you could easily touch it up but it's still like not going anywhere where i find like on a night out with a liquid lipstick once you've applied it once it's harder to touch up this is beautiful also stunning but it is definitely more of a matte finish than these two but it's still a necessity for me so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry if I spoke too fast. It was a very intense video, but I just wanted to get all my favorites out there for you guys. Um, let me know what you want next to see from me and I'm happy to do it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.